25 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. of America. Okay, here we go. We're going to do something that we we always go and uh, go talk to Stephen Pearl, but we always call him in advance to kind of uh, get a weird answer from him when he when we first call him. Let's see what happens here. Come on, start ringing. Hey, what's the matter, book boy? You interested in that Grecian formula in the joint? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you had one gray, Rodney. <laughs> what up? Yeah, oh boy. Yeah, Blagojevich. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like Blagojevich, though. I interviewed him, and I liked him. He was he was funny. He was a fun he's, guy. Yeah, he seems like a nice guy. He just the guy's guy just did something stupid. I think he's eight years is enough for you know <laughs> rappling off. Well, I mean, I hate, I hate, I hate to kill anybody. I hate to agree with Trump, but I mean, eight years for that. Come on. Yeah. You know. That's a long ass time. Yeah, no shit, man. You know. So, uh, you know, what the hell? Yeah. As long as he doesn't pardon the guy who shot John Lennon. On I the other no hand, uh, Bernard, Car- Bernard Carrick should still be in prison, you know. Yeah. And yep, uh, yep, uh, yep. and uh, Michael Milken, you know, who, who stole money from old people. You know, they, come on. Uh, These are not good people. Uh, I know that's right. And, that's but, right. Oh, he, wasn't there a football football guy that he uh, uh, pardoned as well? A football guy? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh God, uh, I'm out of what it do today. Bet on the games? What do you do? Pull up Pete Rose? He shouldn't have done time either. No, no, he, no, he, he owned a, he, he owned a team, you know. <laughs> and uh, yep. he, he, but he, he, they were all people who. I don't think Blagojevich, well, yes, Blagojevich did have a relationship with Trump. By the way, we're talking uh-huh. with Stephen Pearl. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, he did have a relationship with uh, Donald Trump because he was on The Apprentice. Oh, that's right, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, and usually this is something the presidents do at the end of their term. You know, this yeah. is not something you do while you're still... Very much president of the United States. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll the way of the world. The way of the world. What do you do? I, I guess we can all go out and commit a crime, and eventually, you know, it's like a big claw machine. He'll go down. You use the claw machine. You get your pardon. Yeah, you know? <laughs> there you go. If you're white and rich, don't worry. You hey, how about how about hey, you use the, you use the claw machine and you get the presidential uh, medal of there freedom? You, go. you know. So. Let's see who should I get this time. Okay, uh, get one of the Gotti boys. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh. My God, you know. Rush <laughs> I remember when the Medal of Freedom used to mean something. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I well, mean, Limbo, Limbo's going to be in the Bone Garden soon, so we'll give him his toy. What the hell? I guess. I guess. You, you know. know what the hell? So what the hell? He's going to Worm City like any day now. So. <laughs> Let the man. <laughs> let them. He's taking the Southern Express to Worm City, so let the man have his little toy. Oh boy, Worm City. That's wonderful. <laughs> I like that. We're going to Worm City. Gonna lie real still. We're gonna go to Worm City. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, it's it, 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 it all. It's all. Uh, excuse me. I I for some reason I uh, took the wrong pills last night and I woke Uh-oh. up. Completely in a uh, in a in a fog and a haze, and I'm drinking the coffee that's called uh, "Get the Wake the Hell Up" is the name of the coffee. Wake the fuck up with extra caffeine. Drink yeah. it now, you son of a bitch. Yeah, no, wait. Guaranteed, wait. you won't blink within the next hour and a half. Wake the hell up, coffee, and it's, it's got <laughs> wait, like wait a minute. And the flavor is what I love. It is the best flavor. It's called yeah, yeah Jamaican me crazy. 
Ah, I like that. That's a real thing. It's got it's got coconut in it and spices. And it I love is, coconut. I, I love and it's a great coffee. It's a terrific coffee. <laughs> Wake the hell up! But it isn't. I don't know if they have that out here. It isn't waking Money. me the hell up. However, that's the problem. So, uh-huh. I know hmm. caffeine doesn't do nothing to me. So, what's new in the wonderful world of uh, Stephen Pearl as we catch up? Not with... a thing. Doing a few gigs here and there. I was in Reno a couple of weeks ago. That was fun. Right now, I'm sitting on my wooden floor with my cat Muddy Waters. I'm going to yeah. kiss him on the head. Mwah, you're a good boy, Muddy Waters. Yeah. He's a good little boy walking circles around me here, making some coffee, my second cup of the day. Yeah. And uh, that's my big day. And I got some gigs tomorrow. Yeah. But today I'm doing nothing. I'm are, just are, are you doing it? Listen to my Eddie Haskell record. Are, I don't you, know are you doing one next month called The Dinosaurs of Comedy at the Punchline? Oh, no, I'm not on that anymore because I, I don't live there anymore. So oh, oh, I think I, they're doing it without me. That was my that was like our biannual gig at the Punchline. So, oh, really? Uh, it was me, Bubbles Brown, uh, Johnny Steele, who else? Mike Meehan. And I guess they, they replaced me with some old fart. I have no idea, but uh, I don't do it anymore. Well, they should hire me to come in and be the dinosaur host. You know, I can drive right. three blocks and make that kind of money. <laughs> Going to San Francisco and making a hundred bucks, you, I can do that here. Do you feel good about them referring to it as the dinosaurs nope. of comedy? What was that? Do you do you feel good about it being called the dinosaurs of comedy? I haven't asked uh, Bubbles uh, this. I got to ask. Oh, they can about it. They, they can call it the Jew bastards of comedy. I don't care as long as the check clears. You know, call it anything you want. Yeah. As Miles Davis, what do you call this song? Call it anything, motherfucker. You know, just you know, just call it. I don't care. It's not the greatest. They can come up with a better name than that, but uh, you know, well, we used to fill the room up, so we used to fill it up and make a hundred dollars and go home. So I, I suggest call it anything you want. I suggested once to Slayton that we do a, a show, try and pitch a TV show about uh-huh. you know comics that you've never that you, you know, not as dinosaurs of comedy, but you know comedians who somehow never made it big. Right, yeah. and should have. Oh, there's should lots have. of them. There's lots of them, and a lot of them should have should have made it big. They're very, very funny people out there. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, so but, you know, hopefully, many of us are still working here and there. Yeah, well, who who, the bills, who who would you put on that list? Oh Lord, there's you got your me, you got your Bruce Baum, you got your Rich Scheidner, you got your uh, Denny Johnson, you got your Felicia Michaels, you got your Carrie Snow, you got your. Uh, uh, I keep going. I know. I'm and every, out and now. everybody, a other names everybody out there, with, so. everybody out there will go question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, sure. But just see, go on YouTube and look up these names, and you'll see these people are amazing. You know, I so, could uh, go. Yeah. I could go get. That, that's the way it goes. I could put together a show. This is what I said to Slayton with five people <clears throat> who will just absolutely kill it. All right. Sure. You know, so uh, fifteen people if you want. An hour of just incredible comedic talent and it's uh-huh. stuff and it's people that most people have never even heard of you know yep i mean they've never heard of stephen pearl let's be honest about it they've never heard of jeremy kramer i mean how funny was kramer yeah people are qu- out he was there. A com- the comics like them <laughs> the audience didn't quite get him but the comics like them. Rob, Rob, robin used a lot of his material you know what's that Robin, up on me. Hello, hello. I, I said Robin used a lot of his material. Yeah, yeah. So Robin, Robin would make his material work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeremy would do it. It'd be crickets. Robin would do it. It'd be ah. <laughs> so. uh, listen, Jeremy could make me piss my pants. He really could. He could get going, and just, sure. just. Relentless in his comedy. There, there were a couple, sure. couple of people like that who were relentless in their comedy. Um, uh, the one who died recently um, from Boston. Could be anyone. Uh, oh boy, my mind today. Uh, but he, but just uh, guys that, that uh, you know uh, could make you piss your pants. They were sure. that funny. Lots of them. Uh, I had to. What, who's the comedian? Oh, God, I'm just. My mind is just. A blank, and I should know this guy's name, you know. Uh, we're, we're not pants people. What's his name? Uh, oh, Kevin Meany. Kevin Meany. Well, who, just died, well, who just died three and a half years ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Meany could get me going so badly that I would have to beg him to stop because I was, oh, hur- sure. I was hurting. I was physically hurting. 
Yep. And how did he do it? I like Kevin. By just saying the same thing over and over and over again. He made it work. Yeah, it worked for him. You know. <laughs> what he knew how I to do a, was to take a, take something that was funny, aha, you laugh at uh-huh. it, and then to just drive it into the ground, but yep. have have the <laughs> but have the guts to keep on going until it turned itself around and became even even funnier by its repetition. You know. Yep. Um, yep. A, a brilliant comic. Brilliant comic. Oh, he's amazing. He always made me laugh. Always made me laugh. Yeah. So he's a good boy. So he let, let's, too early. let's be introspective about your career, okay? Mm-hmm. Yep. Why'd you never make it big? You're funny. You're very what? funny. You're as funny as as any. You're as funny uh, as nine out of ten comedians that I know. Oh, I was good, almost as good as anyone, and uh, I just didn't kiss enough ass, and I didn't do coke with the right people. I guess I don't know. I didn't get the, the right Jew agent backing me up either. So who I the mean, fuck knows? I mean, a guy like Bubbles. I mean, Bubbles is as good a comic as there is, right? Bubbles is very good. And, and why, why, why didn't Bubbles hit the big time? I don't know, because life is unfair and show business is more unfair. Yeah, he was on Letterman twice, even though there's like a 22 year gap between appearances. But uh, and there didn't have to be a 22 year gap. That was I his know, choice. I know. That was his choice. You know. Yep. I you, don't know. I usually, you go uh, on Letterman, and, that's and just if the you, way it went, so. if, if you go on Letterman and you do well, and they say, "Well, come back and see us again soon," as they did with uh, with Bubs. You then go uh-huh. out immediately and get another five minutes worth of material, and you call them about six uh-huh. weeks later and say, "I'm ready." Yeah, you know. I mean, uh, Jake Johansson, I think holds the record for being on the Letterman show. He oh, was right. on yeah, something, like, something like twenty, thirty times—an amazing amount of, of times. amazing amount of times. And part of it was, that J- and people are going, "Who's Jake Johansson?" Right, but mm-hmm. Jake. Uh, was just a real promoter. You know, he followed it uh-huh. up. And Bubbles, yep. on the other hand, never followed anything up. You know? Yep. And I think what the problem is, it, with guys like you, and with guys like Bubbles, and with guys like, uh, there are quite a few of them I could name, that are so good, <coughs> that Jeremy's a good example of it. You know, the worst thing they can call you is the comedian's com- <coughs> comedian. Because you uh-huh. seem to rely on that. You know, yep. and you seem to say, "Oh well, I'm a comedian's comedian. It should all just fall into place for me. I don't yeah. have to go out, but you have to go out and promote it and be out there promoting and That's right. you know, and you yep. guys weren't into that. You were into doing your act. You know, yeah, you know? I'm not much of a promoter. I'm here if you want me. You know, so. I mean, my career, which I consider a failed career. A lot of people will say, oh, no, it wasn't a failed career. Come on, you, were, you, know, you did very well in San Francisco. And you were known in New York, and you kept going till you were 75 on the air somewhere. And uh, they, it's, But to me, I don't think I ever had a real successful career, not on the level of, uh, well, we won't, I don't even have to compare it to Howard Stern's, not on the level of... Yeah, that, well, he's like, he was like gigantic. So a hack like Don Imus, you know, Uh and I think part of the reason was I never found anybody that believed in me. I never uh, found, that, well, found that agent, you know, that believed in me that said, oh, okay, we know uh, what we're going to do with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I never found that either. So I found a couple of agents, but they didn't do shit for me. Uh, so, I had, okay, the contract ran out. You move on. So, you know, I, had you an a, I had an agent in San Francisco. This is one you're going you're gonna to love. It has to do with the person you know. Um, but... Uh, 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 Live 105 decided they wanted me to leave. And they still had a about, uh, about 13 months left on my contract. And uh-huh. they decided they wanted me to leave. Uh, you know, probably a very stupid move on their part, but they wanted me to leave. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've got an agent. I hired an agent uh, er, when I first signed that contract. And I find out that he is also managing Johnny Steele. Who is, oh, so he puts one against, one against the other. Who is lobbying for my job. And this mm-hmm. agent is representing him. Uh-huh. And at the same time, negotiating my exit from Live 105. <laughs> is there something wrong about that? 
You know? Yeah, I say so, but that's this, that's the Hollywood way. <laughs> you should have been in Hollywood doing that. Shit. Well, I think you're not really exactly allowed to do that. And we called him on it, and he ha- had to drop uh, Johnny and gave Johnny to another agent to handle him uh-huh. for that negotiation. But I mean, how wrong was that when you suddenly find your agent is representing yeah. the guy who's <laughs> going to replace can't trust you? These yeah, I mean, so I mean, that's how much agents believed in me. You know, uh-huh. and hell knows that guy got a lot of money out of me in his, in, uh-huh. in his short time as my agent. Uh, but you know, I, I consider that uh, very wrong. And um, yep, that's a stab in the back, right yeah, there. Yeah. So you know, but I never found an agent that actually believed in me. I once this uh-huh. is you're going to love this. Years ago, I used to have hair down to my shoulders, right? And I had a big yep. bush, mustache and beard, right? And I'm the yep. youth guru in New York City. I'm the hippie on the air, yep. right? I'm the whatever you call me. So that that was my whole persona, you know, the guru of um, the youth, yeah, the, the youth guru. guru. The used to refer to me as the, the youth guru on radio. Okay. Yeah. So I get I meet up with these guys, and they say, "Well, listen, we got an agent to take you to." Okay. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, I think the guy, one of the guys was Paul Block, who later became a producer at, at uh, Carson. And um, um, they take me to this agent. And I remember sitting in the office, and I sit down, and the, the guy looks at me, and he talks to me a little bit like, what do you do? And I got a show over at WPLJ, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, I do this, I do that, and so on and so forth. And, then he, he's looking at these other guys, and he kind of goes over and whispers to them. And then he comes back, and he sits down, and he says to me, quote, if you cut off that mustache and cut that hair short and wore a suit, I think I can get you a game show. <laughs> Make it the next Bill Cullen. And I thought to myself, and I went, I'm not in here for him to get me on a gun. <laughs> Goddamn game show. <laughs> game show. You know, I'm here okay. because I want to have an agent. And uh, this guy obviously has no idea what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. And I said mm-hmm. that. I said, you have no idea what I do for a living. Thank you very much. I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. And I left. <laughs> Today, okay. I, I could, probably could have been the host of The Price is Right. I don't know. There you go. You know, and, and I suppose if I opted for that, I would have made a lot of money. But I just yeah. could, I couldn't could've, do could've it. Been the new wing warm bill. Well, I said, you know, I, I wake up every morning, hate my job. You know? Yeah. So, uh, but that that's what happens with agents. You know, they they think sure. they, they don't think in terms creatively, and so no, I never had not. I never had an agent or someone who believed in me who could take my uh, my uh, 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 career to another level. There was a guy. In uh, in Howard Stern's life, who did make him, and did mm-hmm. write by him, and made him help make him the star that he was. He was over at WNBC here in New York. Uh-huh. Uh, he couldn't stand it. It was horrible. I think he quit or uh-huh. they fired him or something. And um, a guy by the name of Mel Carmazan had a station across town. He said, "Come work for me." He put him on, put him on in the afternoon, and Carmazan felt that wasn't right. It didn't work. Let's mm-hmm. put him on in yeah. the morning. Put him on in the morning. Stern becomes a sensation. Now, the FCC comes calling, going, "Well, Stern said this, mm-hmm. and Stern said that. And we're going to find your radio station for him doing terrible things, and blah blah blah." And Mel Carmazan said to the FCC, essentially, "Go screw yourself." I'm not paying your yeah. damn fine. I'm going to defend yeah. this guy. This guy has the right to do the kind of stuff he's doing on the air. I don't think any of it is yeah. harmful. None of it is, 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 is circumvents uh, obscenity rules or anything like that. But I'm defending him. And he went to bat for him. He told the FCC uh-huh. to fold it five ways and put it where the sun don't shine. And people who owned radio stations, which was the case with Mel, didn't do that in those days. They were deadly in fear that their license was going to get yanked. But he challenged uh-huh. them on behalf of Howard and made Howard a star. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay? 
Now, I yeah. wish I had a guy like Mel Karmazin in my life. Well, later on, I did have a Mel Karmazin in my life because he was at... Uh, at, uh, he was the head of uh, Sirius XM for many a year when I went there. Uh -huh. Or I went there first, and then Mel came on board, and I figured, oh, my life is toast with him coming on board. But instead, one day I meet up with him in the, uh, in the what do you call it, room, the break room, and uh, he, I say to him, uh, by the way, I'd like to introduce myself, Mel. I'm Alex Bennett. He says, of course, Alex, I know you. I'm a fan. And yep. and, right. I, and I think to myself, I wish you had been a fan back then. <laughs> you know, I mean, the you, timing. you could have done something for me. You could you could have made me into yep. another Howard. You know, I never had anybody like that. And um, yep. <laughs> it, it turned out I had refused to go to work for Mel years earlier because I was afraid he was just trying to get me out of San Francisco, which he kind of was. Uh -huh. But that he wouldn't honor my my contract, my uh, uh, giving Those me a bastards. contract. He wanted me to leave the station before he could give me a contract, okay? Uh -huh. So that he could not be accused of stealing me, and uh -huh. uh, I couldn't do it. I figured maybe it was a setup, and I'd be out there in the cold, and then he'd say, "Well, no contract, and I don't have a job." All right. Yeah. So uh -huh. I didn't take the job, and I now refer to that as the worst decision I ever made in my career. Because he, he turned out to be the most ethical man I've ever worked for in my life. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I know he would have honored that contract, and I would have wound up uh -huh. working for him in what well, was going to be the, the Washington, D.C. area, and he was going to syndicate me and everything else. Um, and when I went oh. to work at Sirius, I met up with him, and then we, I, I had to deal with him. I suddenly realized I made the biggest mistake I ever made in my career by not taking that job. Uh, yeah, yeah. You live, you learn. So they went out and they got G. Gordon Liddy to host the show. How there do you, you go. How do, how, <laughs> he played all the hits. How do, you, how do you go from me to G. Gordon Liddy? I have no idea. Makes no sense at all. But I think, he had a, I think him and cousin, they, he was connected to cousin Brucey. He got him in. He grandfathered him in. Yeah, and and, and G. Gordon Liddy lasted for a while as a talk show host under him. So Liddy, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he's an interesting guy. And and then he became uh, Mel Carmes and became the head of CBS Radio yeah. and so on. So anyway, uh, you know, those are agent stories, and those are people who could have. I never had one of those guys in my life who said, "Okay, we're going to oh. we're going to take you to the next level," you know. Uh -huh. um, I had a couple of people who said they would do that, but they they took me down. So I said, "Okay, you're fired." Did you ever feel you were on the edge of making it big, and somehow it just didn't happen for you? Oh no, I never felt I was anywhere near that. <laughs> I just I heard all the promises and the bullshit, but. Uh, you know, I knew it was most of it was bullshit then, and nothing happened, so I moved on. So, but no, I never felt like you know success is only around the corner, and why is it? Why must he dangle this carrot in front of me? I felt success was beyond like seven horizons from now. Maybe I'll get there. Maybe I won't. I uh, once said to, said to an agent, I said, what, "Who's the difficult? Who's the most difficult kind of person to be an agent for?" And he said, "Somebody who's doing something nobody's ever done before." It's very old it, comic. It's ve no, <laughs> no, another for an old comic. No, I mean it, the, the trouble with Stephen Pearl is you were doing something that agents don't know how to promote because it's never been done before. Uh -huh. Okay, yep. you're that original, so you've got you know there very and there are very few agents that take a chance on something that's never been done before because they don't know how to handle that. Nobody's taking a chance on anyone who's 64, no matter what they can do. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think well, about it anymore. Well, I just want to do some gigs and keep having fun until I keel over. Yeah. Then good night, nurse. Well, they don't, they're not hiring older comics. I don't even see uh, Lewis Black around much anymore. Nah, he's doing something. I, you know, I, I guess he's paying the light bill, but I don't know. Uh, no, sure. uh, and he, I haven't heard from him or Amy Schumer, any of the people who were famous 10 years ago. They got a whole new crop. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Amy Schumer had a baby, and that changes everything. You yeah. know, and it changes know your attitude about life, and you know, all that crap. So, 
Uh, what the hell? I'll follow you, him. You know, so we'll we'll just pretend like you were a big star, and that's the reason why. Okay, I had, big star. I, and I thank so you. Cornelia, peel me out of the grave. Oh, Grace, give me your fifty thousand dollars in bonds on a flight to Miami in first class. And I, I, I thank you for uh, for uh, for oh, you my, know coming on my show in spite of your in spite of your notoriety. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but anyway, hey, listen, we've kind of uh, run out of time here. Gee. Oh, well, you see, see that by the old machete in the club owner's hand that my time's about up. <laughs> hey, uh, the old machete on the wall says it's time to go. and uh, Time to go, folks. We'll see you on the next run and uh, stay fresh. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful, the attractive Stephen Pearl. Thank you, thank you, Goodbye. thank you. My dimples were put in by Dr. Goto. Thank you very much. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much, Stephen. So nice to have Stephen there. Yeah, okay. I might want to do something here. I, I always forget to change things up. Every time I turn this machine on and off, I have to reset everything. Okay, that's the way it goes. Okay, well, let's uh, let's go to see if anybody's going to call because uh, they're watching wrestling over at uh, MSNBC, and um, it's uh, it's the WWE of uh, of politics. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's amazing. It is just so amazing. Oh, somebody didn't turn off the uh, the green light uh, on uh, on Gab on. Uh, on, on GabNet Live. Anyway, uh, it's time for you to call our little program. If anybody isn't watching what's going on uh, over there on MSNBC, uh, uh, it, it, it is, uh, you know, I, 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 list, I could only listen to MSNBC so much today when I got so tired of them tirelessly promoting this thing tonight. Ah, here comes uh, here comes Charlie Wallace. He's in early, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put him in the first spot. He will uh, be our our. Oops. Well, wait a minute. I have to hold on a second. I have to do this again because uh, if I don't, if I don't, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Why aren't we cancel? Uh -oh. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, now let me see here. What? What's not happening here? Hold on a second. Let me just test a few things here. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, hold on a second, Charlie. I know okay. you. I know you're there, but for some reason, uh, the picture isn't coming up, and I'm thinking that maybe something. You know. It could be that something changed overnight with Skype, and uh, let me go to System Preferences. And, oh, that's not what I want. I know, I know, but I can't. I I don't have you coming up as a uh, uh, as a thing here. So hold on a second. Uh, tools uh, profile. Where are we? OBS. We well, know we want. We want this. Okay, Skype. Then we want uh, preferences. And then we want uh, audio video, uh, and then we want uh, we were calling, and then we want advanced. Oh, there's what happened. Jeez almighty. See, what happens is they overnight they decide they're going to they're gonna reinstall uh, Skype, and then they reinstall it all wrong. Now we should have Charlie Wallace. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Here's Charlie. How are you, Charlie? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been uh, watching the uh, the uh, the debate. No, I don't watch the debates. I'll tell it's you something. It's not really a debate. Hmm. They, it, they don't really debate. Well, uh, look. You get up there and speechify. I just think the Democratic Party tonight ruined their chances for winning the election. And I'm going oh. to I'm, I'm tell you why. Okay. We have to show unity, not infighting. Now, maybe you think you're better than the other guy, and you think you're better than the other guy, and or the other woman, or whatever. But 
when you, you come to a stage like that that goes out to the rest of America, you want to show a certain kind of unity. And tonight it was pile on Bloomberg. You know, and when they weren't piling on Bloomberg, they were piling on, on, uh, on, on a lot of other people there. I'll tell you who I came out not liking and absolutely detesting is Bernie and secondly, Elizabeth Warren. Now, these are the two most supposed, <laughs> quote, liberal people running. Am I right about that? Yeah. Uh, I think there. I think. Uh, I think Bernie's a phony socialist, and I think uh, Elizabeth Warren's a phony liberal. Okay. I just. I. They're, no, they're you're sinc- entitled to those opinions. It, the, the, the sincerity there just does not ring true with me. You know. And what I didn't like, especially about Bernie, was him attacking Bloomberg, like with a visceral hatred because the guy was a billionaire. Now, I can't hold that against Bloomberg. Bloomberg went into business. He came from nothing. You know, every penny he's got, he earned. All right? So he he was smarter than the next guy, and he made made $60 billion dollars. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. But why do we have to have this visceral hatred towards him because he's a billionaire? I don't think people hate him because he's a billionaire. I think I think Bernie does. Uh, I don't think so. Bernie was engendering nothing but that. Oh, billionaires like you ruin this country, blah, like blah, him. blah, blah, blah. You know, like him, not not all billionaires. Well, no, he was talking. He was basically talking about all billionaires. He the, the billionaire class has been ruining this country for years, and blah blah blah. And I don't know. I just, I, I look. I I I'm I'm very much a lefty, and I'm very much a socialist, but I'm not a Bernie Sanders socialist. To begin with, Bernie Sanders is copping out when he calls himself a democratic socialist because he's trying to kind of make it acceptable to more Americans, you know? No, because he's different from just a socialist. He's a democratic socialist. Well, he's not against capitalism. Well, I, I, uh, I, I'm against capitalism. I think yeah, it's a very... You're a real I, socialist. I, I, uh, no, I think it's a very corrosive system. I think, I think unfettered capitalism sure is. Well, unfortunately, what happens is you get too used to capitalism, and after a while, it's like uh, like uh, chocolate. You know, you can have you have just a couple of pieces of chocolate and say, all I'm going to do is a couple of pieces of chocolate before you know it, you're eating the whole candy bar. Well, I mean, uh, that, uh, gee, my, my, oh, there it goes. Boy, my, I, I was going to turn on my fan. It wouldn't turn on low. I guess I have to put a new battery in here. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I just don't, uh, 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 you know, I, I, I think that there are a lot of problems with Bloomberg. Uh, but I'm going to tell you the one problem I don't think he has. Um, yes, he has $60 billion. And yes, he wants to buy himself the election. But. He's the only one there that can. <laughs> and that's the point I'm making. He's the guy with the money to unseat Donald Trump. Trump cannot... Yeah, but f- it, Trump cannot I don't think fi- you need money to unseat Oh, I think you do. I think you do. Uh, AOC unseated what's-his-name with one... 20th of the money he had. Yes, but she did it in a small... She did it in a neighborhood... She did it in a small community, uh, an enclave, if you will. Uh, and uh, in, in those enclaves, m- minorities do very well in Congress. Uh, and uh, 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 women do very well in Congress at this point because they're, these, these are enclaves. We're talking about the whole country. You know, we're talking the trouble with this country is it's too large. And it's so large that we have such desperate, disparate kind of people in it, you know? I mean, you, you go to Montana, and the people are different than they are in New York City. I think the trouble with New York City is we think Montana's like New York City, and it isn't, you know? 
And to try to appeal to everybody is almost a literal impossibility. Yeah. But if you're going to, uh, the guy with the most money wins. I mean, if you're going to complain... The that's because our system's so corrupt. Well, but th 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 then that's got to change. But since it hasn't changed, and since we're running an election under the old rules, okay, we got to fight fire with fire. And if, it, 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 let's face it, uh, Trump has a lot of money in his yep. war chest. The only person that can beat that is Michael Bloomberg. He can come in with his untold resources. This guy could spend $5 billion on the election and not even feel it. Okay? Um, yeah, well, I, I disagree. Well, I, I disagree that he's the only one that can beat Trump. Uh, really? You think Bernie Sanders can beat Trump? I think every Democrat. I think if, uh, Bernie, if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, that, what that translates into is another four years for Donald Trump. Well, I disagree. Because you, 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 you like to think that, that, that he has this ability to appeal to a whole wide, broad spectrum of people. But let's face it, only 25%, or, or is it 29 in the latest polls? And that can vary depending upon what happens tonight. Um, um, didn't, aren't for him. Okay? Plain and simple. Uh, so um, uh, you're going to need a lot more than that to win an election. And what happens when yeah, all of a sudden? What happens when all of a sudden a lot of these people start dropping out? Then where will the percentages fall? What happens? People have to vote for somebody else. And Trump was only getting 15, 16, 18 percent in his prim primaries in 2016 until everybody dropped out. Well, it's going to be a matter of people dropping out. And the thing is that there are more people aligned in the middle than there are aligned on the left. If you take Warren's numbers and take Bernie's numbers, they still don't hit 50%. The rest are for a more moderate approach. And I don't, I'll tell you what I don't like about Bernie. I think Bernie's an asshole. I think Bernie is not genuine. I think he. Well, I disagree. I've been following Bernie for I, over twenty years. I know people. Always I know insane. people who know Bernie up in Vermont and say he's a major asshole. I don't care if he's an asshole. What I care about is his policies. Well, and he has the policies that I want. No, his policies. He has the his policies po that this country needs. His policies in America, not somewhere else, but in America, are unreasonable expectations. OK, all the things he's saying he wants to get done, he will not be able to get done. Not in America. Now he's going he's going to have to modify them. Wait a minute. In America, I'm talking about this country. This is the country that voted for Trump. Remember that. OK, you know, um, half the people didn't vote. Hmm. Half the people didn't turn out to vote. Well, and probably half the people won't turn out to vote again. You know, I think they will if Bernie's the candidate. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that there's going to be a groundswell of people behind Bernie. I well, I think the whole the whole thing about oh, Bernie's got the youth and so on and so forth. Bernie could Bernie will lead this party to destruction. That's my that's my opinion. I, I I think if we get somebody like and Biden, what I, what I saw Bloomberg tonight, again, what that'll I, lead the party to destruction. I, for a guy who who speaks about the, you know wanting to change things and how wonderful things are, he tonight was playing politics just like anybody else. He was going after Bloomberg. He was making cheap shots against Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg, uh, you know, I'm, I have no great love for Bloomberg. I'm just saying, you want to win or don't you want to win? And if you want to win, this is the guy with the money to do it. He's also the guy that has 60 women charging him with sexual harassment over the years. He's also the guy that that, that had... Where did you hear Where did you hear it was 60 women? Well, that's the last thing I saw well, on the internet. Well, wait, on the internet. Okay. And who puts stuff up on the internet? I don't care if it's 60 or 30, whatever, however many uh, there uh, are. To begin with, it wasn't him personally. That, that it, takes it, that whole 
it, it, it wasn't okay. It was number table. one. It wasn't him personally. It was his company. Okay, if if there were that many women. Okay, secondly, oh, he paid. He, secondly, this is a quote from I him. know a woman that killed the baby when he found out that she was pregnant because he didn't want her taking maternity leave. Where did you hear that? What do you mean? That's just Google it. Okay, wait a minute. What 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 what, what did you just say? That he, she, uh, a woman, one of her. I don't know if he was a, she was an executive or whatever. One of her people that worked for him came and told him that, that she was pregnant, and his first response was, well, get rid of it. Oh, that he, it wasn't his? No, it's not his oh. kid, no, but mm -hmm. that doesn't... Okay. I mean, you okay. think that's, that, that's going to play well with the women who are 52% of the population in this country? To abort baby. Well, let's see if anything comes up. A woman to abort baby. Former employee says he heard Bloomberg. Okay. Former employee says he heard Bloomberg ask a female co-worker if she was going to kill it after announcing her pregnancy. That now a former employee says okay. he heard. Okay. There are two things going on there. Former employee and he heard. All right. That's that's all rumor. Well, you saying Trump's not going to be blowing that all over the well, well, airway? I, look, all I'm saying is, I mean, for instance, when it comes to 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 uh, Bloomberg, I know m quite a few women who went to work for Bloomberg. Okay, and every one of them said it was the best job they ever had. And it was the best work environment. They paid the best. Uh, uh, he paid full medical. You know, uh, they, they, the company was a well-run, employee-centric uh, uh, company. That's what I heard from people who went over there. I knew people that jumped ship from Sirius XM as soon as they could get a job at Bloomberg. That was the place to go. Okay. You know? So, I mean... That, that certainly goes against what they're saying about it being a hostile, toxic work environment. I hadn't heard that from anybody who worked at Bloomberg. I know people that were uh, killing themselves to go to work for Bloomberg. And the only person I know who turned down a job at Bloomberg was Albert because it wasn't it, the, the job wasn't the job he wanted. Okay? So... Um, you know, I, I, I've known people that, that are involved with Bloomberg, so whatever. Is there anybody else going to call tonight? I guess they're all watching the debate. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's over yet, is it? No, it's not over yet. <laughs> what I didn't like about it was I didn't like the hostility that was going on on stage. It, 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 you have to, it, even in a situation like that, I think you'll agree with me, you have to show a certain unity. You know? yeah, but I think there's a lot of frustration that's built up because he's been he spent like three hundred million dollars on ads and his popularity's been rising without him ever having to ask him answer any questions about you know anything. Well, it's all been uh, completely massaged, well you know well formatted ads that he's put out and just blasted all over the the, the world. Well, uh, and, but you know that it seems to have been a successful technique. A lot of people said, "Why is he taking out all these ads? He's not going to, into Iowa. He's not going into New Hampshire. He's not getting into these debates." Uh, number one, he couldn't get into any of the debates because he didn't have ten percent. Didn't have the donors. Yeah, he didn't have ten percent. Isn't donors a matter of ten percent of the of the uh, in the in the polls? Okay, um, uh, and. Um, uh, it wasn't until tonight that he had went over 10%. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, what we thought was a stupid tactic turned out to be a pretty good one. You know what I'm saying? You know, well, I mean, he did. You say that, but we'll see what happens in the first prime he's actually in. Let's see how many votes he gets. Well, uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, and and who who knows? You know, have you been watching any of this? Uh, oh, Tony? I watched it. They were beating the shit out of poor Bloomberg. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, poor Bloomberg. I don't know if you want poor is a good term to use here. You know. You know, 
Yeah. Well, that's a question I don't get with Bernie. You know what bothered me with Bernie tonight? And I I can't believe I'm going to say this. And Pete Buttigieg had a very good point. He says, you know what the problem is with Bernie? If you don't agree, like say you have 100%, right? He's in 100%. And you don't agree with 2%. Well, if you're not in 100% with Bernie, then you're an outsider. Bernie can't play ball with people. That, that's an interesting comment. I didn't hear Buttigieg say that. He said that's the, he said it like in a way like you know, it's either you're on his side with he, all his ideas fundamentally, or you're a, you're a villain. Well, I'll tell you who was coming off okay on that diet. Number one, Buttigieg was coming off all okay. Uh, I and he was, huh? I thought he was good, Buttigieg. Yeah, I mean he was coming off okay because he wasn't coming across as mean. No, like you know, he wasn't Bernie was coming mind. across as mean. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was coming across as mean. Uh, Bloomberg obviously was coming across as defensive. Biden was coming across as mean. Yeah, he was yelling like, come on, Uh, nothing. uh, The only ones that weren't mean were like uh, Klobuchar and and Buttigieg. And is there one other person I'm leaving out of this whole clusterfuck that went on tonight? I mean, Amy looked like she was ready to cry when she couldn't name the Mexican president. Well, sorry, honey, you failed. You know what? Pull your fucking pants up. And well, just because she got all upset, she got to be able to take it a little more on and the What it was that. is you had that one idiotic uh, woman who, uh, who um, uh, um, of the host who I asked really that cry. question of yeah. her about you. You couldn't remember who the president of Mexico was. Well, hey, we all have a brain fart moment. We shouldn't have to yeah. be accused of something. Yeah, and because the woman uh, who was asking the question was uh, was Hispanic, she was from Telemundo, which is one of the yeah, N- really, NBC yeah. networks. Um, it made her seem like she was stupid or something. And hey, you know, I, uh, I uh, when I went to see my uh, neurologist, he gave me a little mental acuity test, and oh, he said, "Oh, they ask you questions he, like what's the president?" Yeah, no, he said, he said, he said, who's <laughs> the governor of New York?" Oh, she would never get that. No, out. wait a minute. And I couldn't get I couldn't remember. And then he said, Who's the mayor of New York City? And I couldn't get that one either. Really? I just no, had no. a brain fart. And then I went home and yeah. I said, Cuomo de Blasio, right? I slipped her the questions once they yelled at me. So, you place. know, I mean, so so what if she couldn't remember for a moment yeah. who the right. prime min, you know, the president of Mexico is? I didn't even know who it was, but you know. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. I was going to say this to Charlie. I heard you listening. You know, they were pretty much making it like with Bloomberg, too. He asked Alex, how many people work for that guy? It's imp- You know you're going to have some bad apples. Work is. I'm sure you had people working for you that, Alex. You could say, this guy's a problem. Sometimes when you got thousands of people working for you, you're going to have bad apples. Yeah. They made it sound like he was compliant with all this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there there are going to be a lot of things said about Bloomberg, and I'm going to believe about half of them, okay? I can see it. I'll believe bit. about half of them. But what I've got to believe is who is best, has the best chances of beating Trump. And nobody on that panel engendered that to me. Uh, and Bernie, especially, to me, came across as a mean, dogmatic you yeah, mean, I didn't think he was that bad. He was. He turned me off this morning. Uh, this today, tonight. Tonight I, he I was. Tonight he was. He was intransigent, mean. Uh, you know. Yes, you want to go say things about Bloomberg and hey, you know, it's the billionaire class who caused this problem. Blah 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 blah. And but you don't. He was just getting a lot of really cheap shots in. I think the only good. Cheap shot that anybody gave was Buttigieg, uh, who said of the two leading people on this dais tonight, uh, there isn't a single Democrat or a single lifelong Democrat. And he was right. Uh, 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 Bernie isn't a Democrat. Okay, no, he and he and and him? and uh, you know, depending on the day of the week, Bloomberg is either a Republican, yeah. an Independent, or a Democrat. Uh, so he was right on that one, and he got a laugh on it too. But he was he was absolutely correct. He said, "Of all of you, I'm the I'm the only one that's a, that's been a lifelong Democrat." Biden, I think, came off badly again tonight, 
You I'm know. tired of seeing him. Like he's yelling. He says, "That's enough. I'm the one who should be doing this job. I was here." You know what? Then you should have ran four years ago. I'm tired of so, all of them yelling. I mean, if you think about Bernie, o- like Bernie only fun. Bernie only has one tone, and that's yelling. You know, I turned it off after ten o'clock. I said, "I can't take this guy anymore." Yeah, my mother and, had him once. And, so and, I can't and, take him. And and, and uh, Biden. You know, when he's referred to as Sleepy Joe, it's a good it's a good depiction of the man. He's very slow, and you know, so I can't accuse him of having been too apoplectic. I but I actually think Buttigieg is probably the most electable. If he I, and I hate to say it, if he kept his sexuality private, he'd probably be well, winning. I wouldn't away. keep my sexuality private. Not in this, not in this day and age. Would you, Charlie? Yeah, you know? I, I wouldn't. But I don't. I don't think anybody should have to do that. That's right. But That's, you just wonder if they're going to vote for him because he's the most electable out of all of them. I think. You know, it's here. We're here. I think we're queer. Get used to it. This country is stupid enough to let that keep them from voting for a good man. Then we deserve to be in a dictatorship. Well, I mean, you yeah. know, I mean, I um, you're you're right. Right. Uh, please don't give America too much credit for brains. Okay, <laughs> I think you know. I I I I I I don't think it's as smart as we'd like to think it is, uh, because we're smart people. I mean, we're not dumb, except for Tony, maybe. But th- we're we're uh, I try. Y- y- you know, <laughs> we're, mother yells at me we're not we're not Tyler. dumb, Charlie. And the people we hang out with and the people we know are people who are like minded, and True. have the same kind of intelligence. I I had somebody tell me that once. I was. Um, I was working for a guy who consulted radio stations, Ted Randall. I had him on the show a couple of months ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like him. And, and I had a meeting with Ted, and uh, I, he, we started talking about things, and I said, yeah, but you know, all my friends like this kind of music. And he said, yeah? Well, I believe that. He said, you're an intelligent person. You have certain eclectic tastes. And you're going to hang around with people who have the same taste you do. So everybody you know likes this kind of music. However, I got to tell you, most of America doesn't. You know, he said, and that's who you're playing to. That's who you're doing the show for. Is Remember always, you're playing to a lot of people out there who aren't the kind of people you would hang out with. Okay? And you've got to make them happy too. And I think that uh, I think that Bernie's terribly divisive. I yeah. think he has a, a a really mean demeanor. I mean that that was the part I guess that got to me tonight. He was. I wonder he, if you he sat was, down with him. I wonder if it's true. I I bet you would have an argument with him. Like I couldn't take him anymore. You probably say, like he's so like thick. Well, my problem is he does. Uh, to me, he doesn't have a likability factor, and you know. I think he's been making a lot of the cheap shots against people. His his thing about yelling about, well, I'm not responsible for what my people do. Yes, you are. Sounds like Trump. You set the tone. You know? No, he has never come out and told people, you go beat somebody up and I'll pay your legal bill. He is not. Well, like no, Trump. I'm not saying he. He has he, never I'm, condoned I'm not, any kind of activity no, like that. No, but for true. instance, one of his people today started the rumor that Bloomberg had had a heart attack. He did. Yes, one of one of uh, one of um, Bernie's uh, head of Bernie's uh, uh, campaign told the press that in his past Bloomberg had had a heart attack, and then when it came out that B- Bloomberg never had a heart attack, I think the only thing happened he had a stent or something like that, that he never had a heart attack. They had to withdraw that statement, but. If so, is Bernie responsible for that, Charlie? If it was one of the people that's at the top of his pecking order. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, having a stent is not a minor operation. That's still a heart problem. Uh, it's a very, it's very minor in this day and age. They put a stent in, like uh, they're going to do this thing with me on Tuesday, and it's probably but isn't uh, about in the Bernie, same didn't category. Bernie have a heart attack too. What? Bernie. He's pointing fingers at heart attacks. He had one himself. Yo, he had one. Uh, yeah. I think the re- response was people keep complaining about Bernie having had the heart attack, and so I guess this, whoever this worker was for. Listen, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Said, he, I'm glad. Well, I'm, Bloomberg had a heart attack too, or something. I'm like glad that. he had the heart attack then rather than later. 
I'm glad that he had it because they then corrected the problem, put some stents in, got him back to going again. He looks a little healthier, or at least as healthy as Bernie can look. Uh, and and I, I think it got him, you know, you've got him in good shape. So, I mean, I would... But but think, I mean, I mean to, there's it, no guarantee. You could have somebody who's never been sick a day in look, their life. I, that's no guarantee. We had two presidents die within three months of being voted, within, within, uh, within three months of taking office. I, uh, and none of them had ever had heart attacks before. One of them was Neither what? One of them. one of them was Harding. Who was the other one? Uh, Garfield. Garfield? No, Garfield was shot. Well, somebody, you know. I think it's. Yeah, but he was I, shot I, within I, three months. Okay, that was. That was uh, he yeah. was shot within so, three yeah. months. Well, that's lead poisoning, so it's, yeah. Uh, no, but I'm saying there's still no guarantee. I mean. Well, Anybody I mean, anybody could just drop dead. Look, you want to talk about you want to talk about the problem with uh, 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 with that kind of thing. Uh, I'm surprised Trump isn't keeling over right now. I mean, I think Trump had a heart attack when he disappeared, and went to the hospital that time. They never have told us what happened to him. I think he had a heart attack then. Well, something's happened because. He has these moments where he starts just not, not even slurring his speech, but speaking yeah. in tongues. Talking gibberish. Yeah. Talking gibberish. And then he kind of clears up and comes back. Uh, and that's a sign of something. And I don't know what it is, but, you know. But, you know, I, I pray every day that he lives because I don't want Mike Pence. Come on. You know how how religious do you want this country to get? You know? Oh God! Yeah. So anyway, well, we should have people start calling us now. The debates are over with. I, I turned it off a little after ten. I couldn't take it no more. When they went to that, when I, I said, there's only so much you can take. It Marjorie anymore. took about ten minutes of it and said, "I can't stand this anymore." They jumped well, right on the right off the side. Yeah, I mean it was. A, well, they what went. what they did. I hate to say this, they actually made um, uh, him a little more of a sympathetic character. I, I know that's hard to believe, folks, when I say that, but when everybody starts piling on one guy, then that guy, people start feeling sorry for that guy, okay? And they kept piling on him and piling on him. He was a guy to just pile on. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know, do you think Bloomberg handled it well? Or do you think? I think he, he well, I don't, it's, I guess it's hard to say. I think he kept his cool, which is good. I was ready for him to tell Warren. I was looking at his hands, how he's moving them. I was just waiting for him to say, just let one go on already. Well, I think there's a problem with Bloomberg gotta, in that he doesn't explain himself well. He was asked the question, there are women who have confidentiality agreements with your company. Yeah. Will you release them from those confidentiality agreements? And he said, uh, no, because that's really up to them and the reason why we signed them in the first place. He said Confidential, confidentiality agreements in many cases protect the person who signed them, okay? Uh, and he said, I can't say that I will because it, you know, do the women want to, you know? I call BS on that. Uh -huh. I have never signed a confidentiality agreement that protected me. It always protected my employer. Well, to begin with, even though people sign confidentiality agreements, it's not a guarantee that those confidentiality agreements would hold up in court. And a lot of times, they have to do with company secrets. Okay? Mm -hmm. They have to do with, with, uh, with company stuff. And um, oh, here comes Jeff. Okay, let me see here. Let me... Uh, give him a spot. Got to give him a spot. I think we have one available. Uh, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, give me uh, a good one. Uh, Steinzel. Uh, oh, oh, you're the you're you're the one with the whole big deal there. You don't have your name up there anymore. There we go. There's there's Jeff. How are you, Jeff? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, um, uh, because it comes up Pamela Zeller. Is... Well, I, that's because Jeff Stein got kicked out of of uh, Skype. Why? 
I have no idea. What kind of dirty stuff were wow. you doing? Were you exposing yeah. yourself to young girls or something like that? <laughs> no, and I, I mm. got thrown out. We're being joined now also by, wow. uh, let me see here. I got to I gotta get rid of a couple of people. Oh, it's here. Todd. Yeah, it's Todd. It's Tad, hey. as they would call him up in the, up in the, let's see here, Todd Moore. There we go. Hello, Todd. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Da, da, Todd, did you watch any of that clusterfuck tonight? Yeah, I did. I just ended it. Yeah. Well, I tell you. What? 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 What, you, what was your takeaway? Oh man, it was something else. It was everybody trying to jump on everybody, and then you got Bloomberg. Woo! They jumped on him. Back. <laughs> yeah. 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 That he did. Funny. That was like a boxing match. Well, and but, 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 remember <laughs> Hacksaw the first. But time you know the reason. Up. You know the reason all of that was bad is it makes it look like the Democratic Party can't come up with any decent unity, you know. And all the horrible things they're saying about each other are going to come home to roost when one of them becomes a nominee, and then Trump says, "Well, even your own people said blah blah blah," right? So it's yeah, going to say that anyway. Well, he's going to say that anyway, but really let's like let's not let's not give him too much of it. Let me say here. this. Yeah. As much as I dislike Bloomberg, if he wins the nomination, I yeah. will definitely go out and vote for him. See, I got to give him credit. He's probably from the line. Oh no, you, you know, uh, 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 I I don't. It's almost as though if, at this point, if Adolf Hitler were running on the Democratic I'm Party, I'd vote for him rather than Trump. Uh, you know something uh, that light in back of you, Jeff, is is causing you to just look like you're a witness in the witness protection program. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll switch it around. Yeah. If you switch it off, you probably get more light on you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but what? It, 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 did that bother you that they were arguing that much with each other and they were getting that nitpicky and everything, and they didn't, they weren't really going to the issues as much as they should? I mean, I, I found it bothered me a great deal. You know. Um, what'd you think, Todd? Can you hear me, Todd? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. It, it did a little bit, but. They were bringing up points, and they were trying to get the votes they needed to stay in the game, I guess. Um, you know, um, you know who my man is, Bernie, and you know, so yeah. I just, I I'll just find Bernie, back. I just find Bernie mean. You know, I find there's a mean edge to him that I, I just can't warm up to. Nah, well, I mean, you know. Uh, and, Everybody and, does, though. And, and Everybody on the stage did. And you, you're a black person. Aren't you supposed to like uh, Biden? <laughs> uh, now, uh, let's see. Here. Now, no. now that, wait a minute. Now there's no light on you at all, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, there's no He's light on you at all. Sick. Jeff, can you hear us? Yeah, now I can. Yeah, we can't can see you. Now see you're completely now in the I'm dark. Now I'm blind. Huh? Yeah, yeah, now you're completely in the yes. dark. No light at all. Huh? Yeah. Well, we, we, I'll, try, I'll try a different light. Yeah. If you can have, is there, is there some light in front of you in that you can turn you, on? Yeah. No. Mm. No. Well. And I don't know what I did last night. Just, last uh, night it was fine. Yeah. Are you using a? Uh, are you using a? Uh, is that a uh, like a, a laptop you're using? Yeah, it's an Apple laptop. Okay. Here's my, turn on the light in the back. Go turn the light on in the back, and then we'll kind of have you shift Well, I'll move, the laptop. I'll move over there. That's the, probably the answer. That yeah, could be the answer. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah, I'll just turn the lights back on. I'll just do it. Yeah, 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 that's how we do it. Because we'd like to see your face. It's, you know, I mean, when the guy in the truck is better lit than you are, we know we've got problems. <laughs> Actually, the guy in the truck's really, you looking, I know. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, that does it for you. There we go. Here comes, here comes our man. Yeah. All right. There we go. There we go. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I just felt he he put me off so badly tonight. Um, um, 
Elizabeth Warren was putting me off. And these are two people I should just be going, yay, 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 because I believe in what they're saying. I just don't believe they believe it. You know, I'm not... Well, I disagree with you. Bernie's yeah. the most genuine person out there. I don't think so. I, 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 yep. I, 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 you haven't been following him like I've been following him. I've been, been saying following the same him. Thing. I see him all the time. For 40 years. He's been saying the same thing. He's had the same policy. He's been calling. He was coming for universal health care forty years ago. So was I. <laughs> you know. You well, know. Why don't you agree with him then? In fact, in fact, a lot of believe it or not, a lot of uh, Democrats over the years have called for universal health care. It's just that it's never in this country become a practicality. And Only because the billionaires control everything. No, I'll everything. tell you something. It's no. practical in England. It's practical in Denmark. It's practical in France. It's I, practical no, no, in no, Japan. No, no, I, I know they that. They got less money than we have. And, 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 I, and I, I know that argument, but that isn't the reason why. The reason why is Americans are used to the way their health care has been. They don't understand that their health care has changed. Okay. How it's changed is it used to be, hey, you had your health care, you, you, you worked for somebody, okay? He had a health care plan. You signed up for his health care plan. He paid all of it. You didn't have any co-pays. You didn't have any of that stuff. And slowly but surely, co-pays came into the whole thing. And, and then the, the, your, your, your company said, well, we pay for a certain amount of it. You have to pay for a certain amount of it. And slowly but surely, it got uglier and uglier. And they're still dreaming about the health care they love that they used to have. Okay? So if you want to watch a good program on this, if you, do you ever watch John Oliver? Yep. Did you watch him this week? Yep. His whole explanation about health care was perfect. He did away with every argument that everybody has yep. about health care. He said, because you're living in a dream world. If you, if, if you think... Except he didn't go far enough. In what... He didn't mention the fact that every other country that has universal health care their citizens live years longer than Americans. Well, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't cover so everything, bad. but what he was doing... Why do, why do Canadians live three years longer than us? Why do, why do Britons live three years longer than us? Well, because... We uh, live three years longer than us. Because they don't, we don't have no, no, 45,000 people a year. They don't have 45,000 yeah, people a year but, just dying the, because they don't the have health The fact issues. that he didn't get around to that wasn't important because what he was getting around to were the three main arguments people have about universal health care. I can't pick my own doctor. He said, you can't pick your own doctor now. No. You got to have one that's in network. And if he's not in network, right. then you're going to have to pay full price and try and collect it from the insurance company. So, you know, yes, uh, Todd. I uh, picked my own doctor, and uh, I didn't pay nothing. Y yeah, but was he in network? Uh, I don't. I don't really know. I yeah, just they, he would. He would have to be in network. Yeah. Okay, but what? But basically, Oliver was saying that 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 argument yeah. that you get to pick your own doctor now is not necessarily true. You get to. How many times have you, any of you, gone out to find a doctor, and you went to a doctor, yeah. and he wasn't in network, so you had to yeah. go find one that was in network? He told a perfect story in about. Fact. He told a perfect story on that show about a woman, who uh, had something happen to her, and she needed an ambulance. But she couldn't use the ambulance because her insurance didn't cover an ambulance, so they had to drive her to the hospital. Yeah. But they had to drive her to a hospital that was in network, and then she had whatever procedures he ne she needed and suddenly found out the doctor who operated on her wasn't in network, so she had to pay more money for her. So what he's basically saying is you really don't get to pick your own doctor. Yeah. Not only that, if your employer provides your insurance, what happens when they switch from Blue Cross Blue Health, Blue Cross Blue Shield to Aetna? All of a sudden, your doctor you've been going to for years is not in network, and you got to change your doctor. You're absolutely correct, and and uh, uh, but but he but he was saying that, he, he, he was saying that that's a that's a that's a big problem, you know, and that he also you have more about, choice with Medicare uh, for all. Okay. But you're also you're working for somebody, 
And if you leave that job, yeah. your, your insurance doesn't follow you. You get COBRA for you know a certain amount of time, which is very expensive. And an exorbitant rate. Yeah. yeah. But if you go to another place to work, well, you get the, the whatever insurance they've got, but there's probably a period of time where you're not being covered as you're going from one. So what he was saying was is that all the preconceived notions that people have about not being able to pick your doctor and, and uh, y you know, I, I, I can't see why anybody wants to pay insurance, you know? I mean, and keep these insurance companies in business. They, they've slowly but surely milked us. You know, I'm going through what I'm going through now. Um, when I'm through, I will have cost my insurance companies and Medicare close to $40,000, all right? Of which I suddenly <laughs> have to pay a copay at the beginning of the year for Medicare and for my secondary. And I'm thinking, $40,000 and you want $250 out of me? Why? What does that buy you? You know? Uh, I could never figure that one out, the deductible. I think on Medicare, the deductible is something like 150 something like that. You go, why? You, you're going to spend $40,000 on me, you assholes, you know? And, and so, uh, you know, I mean, there are all these misconceptions people have about, about yeah. uh, uh, you know, single-payer health care. Oh, the quality of your doctors are going to go down. No, your, your doctors, if they want to stay in business, are going to have to take, you know, the Medicare for all. Yeah. But the question is, when you say Medicare for all, you have Medicare, right, Charlie? Yep. Okay. How much money a month do you pay towards Medicare? I pay towards Medicare. I pay one hundred and seventy dollars a month for my premium or whatever. No, no, it that, just went up in January. It, no, wait a minute. Is that for your Medicare or for your secondary? That's for my Medicare. I don't pay anything uh, for my secondary because that's paid by my for. My well, for the state of Texas. Well, you're you're, work. you're very lucky about that. Um, yeah, I'm very lucky because I think you're paying more like 148 dollars. I think every month taken well, out of taken yeah you might take, be right taken out of your social security taken out of your social yeah. security uh, and 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 paying for it. Well, what happens if we go to Medicare for all? Is there still going to be that monthly no. payment on the part of people? Well, but Medicare. No. But the Medi bill that Bernie Sanders put in the Senate, mm -hmm. there's no premiums at all. There's no deductibles at all. There's mm -hmm. no co-pays at all. You go to the doctor, you get taken care of. You go to the hospital, you get taken care of, and you walk out of the hospital without dropping a single dime. Yeah. Now, what do you do, Todd? Do you, you have... Um you have a medical plan, right? It, Give me a second. Yeah. My sound went back out again. No oh boy. There, there, we, there go. we go. There we go. Got it. Okay. I got it. Uh, anyway. I think uh, I got it. There we go. Uh, uh, you, you, do you have, uh, do, what kind of, what kind of health care do you have? Uh, I have, uh, <laughs> I have um, some stuff for being so, like, Low income, uh -huh. you know, an operator that um, I pretty much get everything kind of free. It's kind of between like a, a, a pharma and something else. I'm opening my wallet, I can tell you what it is. Yeah. Right, right. For some reason, your microphone isn't working that well right now. Uh -huh. For some reason, your microphone's kind of working weird now. My microphone did that too. Yeah, is it covered? Is it? No, every time you lean back, your voice gets real quiet. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah. Every time Every you move. Every time you lean back, when you start looking through your wallet and you lean back away from the camera, then your voice, then the, your, the microphone quit working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, this uh, happened last night, and I don't know what's going on because I thought I got it. It was a button I had to push, and now it's still doing it. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to go push now, but. Well, you sound good now. But yeah, as long well, as you're I, I can barely hear you guys, though. Yeah. Oh. Uh, wow, that's weird. That's very weird. Uh, I'm gonna try to hit the button real quick. Give me a second okay. if I can. I hope I don't disconnect. If I do, I'll call back. Give okay. me a second. Okay. Uh, what the hell is this button? 
Uh, where the hell is that damn button? There it is. Yeah, yeah. Did I get it? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you, but then it goes away right after I hit it. What? Really? What? Yeah. I have no idea what that would be. I don't know. <sighs> Freaking phone, I guess. Yeah, yeah. By the way, did you hear what Trump said at a speech about Bernie? This is one you're going to love. If Bernie's elected president, he's going to let all the Mexicans in and let them have free health care. Instead of Trump pardoning all the criminals and letting them back out. <laughs> well, he, what, he, what he did is he pardoned the swamp. That's how he drains it. You know, you know what I like about Trump? He's not divisive. <laughs> he knows how to bring everybody together. He's not in the same room. Yeah, let's all come together. Let's all be friends. <laughs> Next, he's going to say, Why can't we all get along? You know. Just don't leave me in. Mean, come on already. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's crazy. I mean, come on. Phil has to agree, Alex. He's a little nuts. Yeah. So. He'll never so uh, I don't know. You know, it's down to it's down to what six people now in these debates. Hopefully, somebody drops out after tonight. I think Amy's gone after tonight. No, I don't think Amy's gone. She's gonna hang in. I think okay. she's gonna hang in there. Yeah, her I, strong states are still coming up. Yeah, I mean, she's. You know, I like her. I don't know if I love her. And I like um, um, uh, Buttigieg. But I don't know if I love him. Well, no, I don't love him. Uh, but, uh, you know. Um, and uh, Biden, no. Bernie, no. Elizabeth Warren, no. Uh, uh, I, I've, I've got to say, I, I, you know, I, I can't say that I like uh, Bloomberg, you know. Uh, the only thing about Bloomberg that I do like uh, is that he has half a, I think he has half a chance because he's got the biggest pocketbook, you know? I mean, I, I, I know that sounds horrible, but you're going to need a lot of money to beat Trump, and he's got an inexhaustible amount of money. And, and um, so I think we, we, we hold too, too much against Bloomberg because he's got money, you know? But let's admit it. He didn't inherit it like Donald Trump. He actually went out and earned it. I mean, he must have worked awfully hard to get sixty billion, but he earned oh, yeah. it. You know? <laughs> yes, Ray. Did you watch the debate, Alex? Yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched about uh, two, about uh, three quarters of it. Okay. Yeah. I thought Boom Bloomberg just got destroyed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank. You. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, they just ripped into him. Well, he got only got destroyed because they were doing a gangbang. Yeah, they went after him. You know, him. I, I, I actually was getting mad at Bernie because of the way he was going after Bloomberg, and I felt the same way about Elizabeth Warren. I felt if they were going to really win this debate, they would back off of going against Bloomberg and just let Bloomberg's own words hang him. Okay? Well, he did. I mean, I heard him say... We tried socialism once. It's called communism, and it didn't work. First of we all, we never tried, tried communism. communism. We haven't. I mean, I couldn't believe that. That just Who said that? Republican in Democrats' clothing. Bloomberg. No, that's not what he said, Ray. He said something else. Oh. Um, you know, we tried socialism and did work. It's called Social Security. It's called Medicare. Listen, socialism works, and and and. It it should be have a certain modicum of 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 uh, let me let me better yet let me go back to what uh, um, uh, former leader of China said uh, uh, what's his name uh, I'm trying to remember the name now and my mind's been a shattered all day today um, but he was being interviewed by Mike Wallace and he said uh, now you hate capitalism right and his answer was. I think it was Cho and Lai. He said, uh, no. He says, I have nothing against capitalism as long as it benefits everybody. I thought that was the best way of putting it. Nothing wrong with capitalism as long as it benefits everybody, but it only benefits 
2% of this country and the rest of us have to go scrapping for a living. Uh, I don't, you know, and any of you out there, I mean, I, I, I don't understand a guy like Phil. Does Phil think he's that rich, you know, yeah. that he can be on that side? No. A, a lot of people feel, well, I've got a, a $500,000 in the bank. I'm a Republican. But fuck, you, you're just out of your mind. You're not even in the club, okay? Mm -hmm. Nothing they're going to do is going to benefit you. Well, but I'll tell you, what, I tell you, that, there was something. There's off. something that went on, and I want to get, I want to get uh, Todd's feeling on this. I get a little tired of these politicians in trying to curry favor with voters, of always invoking blacks and Hispanics. Yeah, why do they do that? And, not, they do that and not, not saying everybody. OK, because there are a lot of poor whites in this country. And by the way, they're the ones that voted for Trump. OK, gotcha. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of poor whites in this country. What, about, what are you going to do for the poor whites in this country? Not all the poor people are black. Ask Beyonce, you know, I mean, and not all the not all the rich people are black uh, and not all the white people are rich. Ask, ask me, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's just. I didn't. Uh, Do you feel that uh, uh, a little uncomfortable with that, Todd? That they're trying to like play to the blacks and the Hispanics rather than just include everybody and say, "I want to make life better for everybody." Well, I think they do that because they need the votes because well, they need to go against uh, the Trump supporters that you were just talking about that are poor, and um, they need the votes to basically level up and if. If they don't get the black vote, they're lost. If they don't get the uh, Mexican, Puerto Rican, the Latino vote, they definitely lost. So they're definitely placating towards trying to get all the votes they can but, but, of certain um, certain um, uh, um, candidates. But when there. they do um, that, when they do that, when they when they you know to begin with, if I, if I I'm not black, but if I were black, I would feel they were kind of pandering to me. You might as that. well be black, sir. You're Jewish, correct? That's correct. And any Jew, okay. yeah, any and Jew. And that's why I kind of they hate us. Huh? What were you they saying? Hate no. As much as they hate blacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Todd, go ahead. And then, and then you don't like Bernie. Um, and then you asked me why I didn't like, um, uh, what's his name? What was his name? Um, Biden. Biden. Yeah, but you asked me that. So why you don't like Bernie, bro? I mean, why don't I like Bernie? Uh, because Bernie has denied his Jewishness. Oh, what? Okay. Oh, yeah, oh. he is. Con Am I right, Jeff? Bernie's been constantly, you know. He says, "Yeah, I'm Jewish, but you know." Oh, he's just telling the truth. Uh, because so I was raised Catholic, but I'm an atheist. Well, because somebody, my wife said to me, um, you know, no. Uh, 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 no Jew will ever be president. And I said, yeah, I said, the, we're the last ones in pecking order. We had a black, finally made it to the White House. We're going to get a woman eventually. And then later, way later on down the line, a Jew will be elected president. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. If we get a Jew now, um, when I come back to New York, we got to go out to eat. <laughs> he wins. Okay. Hey, if well, he, I, 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 look, uh, if he won, if he let me put it this way, if Bernie won, uh, I I'm I would will have voted for him. Okay, if he's the nominee, and if he wins, uh -huh. then uh, I don't feel bad because Trump's out, Bernie's in. I don't think Bernie's going to get a lot of what he wants to get passed. Passed, but God bless him. Let him try. OK, because 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 I'm a because I'm a socialist and I'm for the programs he wants. OK, uh, so I, I would feel I wouldn't feel uncomfortable with Bernie being president. Let me put it that way on any level. So we could go out and have that dinner. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, I just don't think the so and so can can win win the election. I just don't think he can he can seal the deal. He can play the game like he's playing it now to Democrats who want to hear all this stuff, you know, and be ginned up and so on. But when he's got to go out there and he's got to convert people to him, 
people who are were Trump supporters. What do you think, Ray? Do you think he? How do you, he needs to convert people, because the the poor whites that you were talking about vote for Trump. He needs to get the black vote and the minority vote, all of that. He needs them to get out and vote. Because yeah, but he also vote. needs, I think, and he could if he were if he were smart enough on this level, go out and get those poor whites to start voting for him by saying your life is going to be better under me. You think he could really? Trump's get- going to take away Social Security and Medicare. It's become such a cult. Of they don't care. They, 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 if you watch these people, they don't care. Trump could do anything that it doesn't serve their purpose, and they stay with them. And I'm just thinking that they've given up on it. They've, I think Bernie and all the other ones up there have just given up on trying to convert those people. Well, what, no are, what are we going to do for the poor whites in this country? We, you know, I mean, we have to have... We're going to give them health care, one thing. Well, you know, but they, they, they don't, don't have it now. Oh, they love their health care, the health care they've got. That's why they're missing front teeth. 500,000 Americans they, every year file bankruptcy. Because they don't, they don't have dental care is what the problem is with Trump's people. Like I'm missing Actually, a tooth Bernie's back here. Gives dental care. I, I'm missing a tooth back here, and I'm going to pay uh, good money for an implant just so I don't look like a Trump supporter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, me and my sister took him to the shop, and I saw a flag outside the house: "Trump 2020, no more bullshit." <laughs> it was. I got to take a picture of it for you because I started laughing. <laughs> oh my god, they yeah. got the flags out in Queens. Uh, so, uh, cool. it, uh, we should come up with. Trump signs to say Trump 1820, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, I was like, they got it right yeah, now. Yes, Ge- yes, Jeff. Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, oh, get you're it. Muted. You're muted. I'm mute. Oh, I'm not. There we okay. go. Yeah. The one thing that bothers me all the time is I, and nobody really says it. I think the reason that Trump won has to do with racism. Yeah. And, and Russia. Mm-hmm. And the Russia thing, too. And abortion. Yeah. And, and I, I, th- I think a lot of these so-called poorest uh, people who are Trump advocates, mm-hmm. they don't give a shit that they're wonderfully saying, oh, well, he made the stock market went up. He said, do you have any stock? No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the stock market is only important to people who have stock. Let's be honest right. about it. And, but, and, you know, it's like they're just happy that that Trump is taking money out of the government. And he's somehow convincing them that he, he just throws it into, into the toilet or something like that. <laughs> Even though we all know that he, yeah. he takes the money and sticks it in his ass. <laughs> by the way, by the way, how many of you are feeling that whole uh, tax break that we got? <laughs> not me. Oh, not even close. Yeah, not me either. And Chris. more. Hmm. And more. And also, my health care went up. Your health care went, went up. How much? Yeah. It go, how much should go up? Uh, about two hundred bucks. No. Uh, yeah, about two hundred bucks a month. I pay just two hundred bucks a month. Who who are you who are you paying Ah. that to? Don't tell me he's got that Kaiser Shield, huh? Blue Shield. Oh fuck, boy. Oh, and then the rest of my family's got to pay because we don't work company. You know, you know what happened? What happened was the 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 insurance companies prior to I can't remember what year. I think prior to the Reagan administration. Yeah could not make a profit. They were all non-profit organizations. Yep. They were not for profit. And that's why health insurance was so reasonable. Once they took that away and allowed them to be profit making, look at what's happened to health, you know, what's happened to health insurance. I mean, uh, you know, I'm even paying $148 a month out of my social security for Medicare. I mean, granted, uh, it, it pays for itself, especially at my age, but nevertheless, I mean, what's happened is we have to go back to saying to insurance companies, you've got to be nonprofits. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can't Absolutely. make a profit. 
Well, Trump won't do that. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, of course not. That's why we have to get rid of him. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, well, Ray. I want to say the, the, the one thing, and nobody tonight talked about it, and no one ever talks about it, but we, in this country, we spend so much money on military. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just completely makes people poor. That is what yep. is making people poor. Yes, and sir. Talks about it. Mm -hmm. It's the amount of money we spend on military is just it. It's it's, it's obscene. It's a travesty, and that's and that just like throwing. That's like going to Tahoe and burning it. It's a, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, we. I think it is still somewhere around fifty-two percent of every tax dollar goes to the military. You know, we could cut the next the most inexpensive country per capita. This is per capita, okay? Per capita is um, is England that's 10%. Wow. And the rest of the countries are even lower than that. Just think how well off we would be as a country if we didn't do that. If we could do away with go down to I'll give you 20%, okay? Yeah. Think of what we could yeah. do with all that other money and not, not have to change our taxes or whatever, but do with all that money. We could have single-payer health care, and we could have free college tuition. Yeah, but, we'd have it all. But, but you know what, what, what isn't happening? Did anybody on that dais bring that up? No, none of them. Is that part of Bernie's yeah. plan? Uh, no. Nobody's. They don't want to touch it. None of them are willing to say that we pay way too much for 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 a Bernie said a, that. for a, a a a a cat at the door of the mouse hole that isn't there, you know. Yes, uh, Todd. The reasons why not a whole lot of people, but Bernie did say that mm -hmm. is because technically we are the empire of Earth now. All we do is run around, get gold, get the oil, and we keep on fighting everybody. And we're just making more and more enemies. And and war is money. Peace yep. is yep. never no money. Right. You, can't, you can't make money on peace. Right. So you got to make money with war. Mm -hmm. That's what's wrong with this lovely place that I am trying to get my passport and get out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah. So we're probably going to move to your, my wife's French, so we're probably going to move there. Mm hmm Well, yeah. you know something? I... I I wish I were younger. I would do the same thing. I'm just too old to kind of leave at yeah, this point. Yeah, me too. You know, yeah. As you get older, you just it just becomes more and more impossible. If I were if I were in my 40s right now, I'd be gone so fast, my you wouldn't we wouldn't see my shadow. You know. Hey, Tom, I think you could move to Portugal pretty easily. They they're trying to get Americans to live there. <laughs> really? Oh, so, uh, Portugal? There's, yeah, seriously. Why? Why do they yeah. want Americans there? I don't know, but they're just they're they're it's pretty lax. You I have a friend who just moved there. There were a lot of people I knew way back when who were moving to Prague because Czechoslovakia was actually paying oh. Americans to move there. They want us because it, well because they wanted American talent. They wanted the <laughs> skill sets that Americans had that they found was lacking in Czechoslovakia. And if you had a skill set that they needed. They would pay for you to come there and live there, and they'd help pay for your uh, accommodations and and, yeah. and pay you a really good salary. Yeah. yeah. You, Jeff, you remember that? Yes, and, and I remember that. I, I, I can't remember if it was on TV or it was on the New York Times at the time about this family mm -hmm. who moved to Czechoslovakia, I think it was. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, like three years, four years after that, they came back. Yeah. And then uh, I said, well, it didn't exactly work out as as good as they thought. It, it as good as they thought it was going to. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have been joined by Kevin. Uh, yes. Hello, Kevin. How are you? There hey, he Kevin. is. He's right, he's right over there. There he is. How are you? Uh, uh, did you watch the uh, debate tonight? Nah, I caught the tail end of the <clears throat> bitching and whining afterwards. I was at a planning commission meeting tonight trying to help my friend uh, try to open up a 
expand their bakery to a brewery. No, I see. Okay. So, so you were there giving them support. But what, what did he say about the bitching and moaning after it was over? I mean, who was... Uh, with- I just caught a little bit of uh, Klobuchar. As I was driving home, I listened to the tail end of the, the debates, and that's when uh, Buttigieg and Klobuchar were going at each other's throats, and then they had a little bit of the, you know, the after the aftermath with, you know, the interviews afterwards, and I heard Biden... Uh, talking about oh, here's here's the deal, man, and a uh, little bit of uh, Klobuchar chewing on Buttigieg about how he has no experience being a mayor and yeah, uh, mm. you know. Well, just what experience stuff does she have? She well, you know, she, she's she's, she, she's, she's she, wait, seems like she's just climbing on him because he's just been a mayor and she's a a big senator. Well, oh, being a president is an executive job, and a, a senator is not prepared for an executive job. You get what I'm saying? A mayor would be probably be in better shape to be a president just simply because they know about maintaining budgets and, you know, <clears throat> things like that. Yeah, um, you know. Yeah, Jeff. First thing she says is, I put together a, a hundred... No, uh, new laws. Yeah. Oh, she floated a hundred new laws. Yeah. So did, so did a hundred other people. Too. So did everybody else on a dais who was a senator, I'm sure. I mean, Bernie has been floating bills forever. There's some question as to whether those bills ever came to fruition. Uh, Charlie would be better, more knowledgeable on this than I am. Uh, has has um, has um, uh, Bernie uh, put any bills forward that actually came to be, or were they all pie in the sky? No, he actually had some bills that I can't tell you which off the top of my head. But yeah, he's had some bills since he's been in Congress. Yeah, that have, that but, have but, he, long. but he's been working on single payer health care for, as you say, forever. Okay. Yeah. As long as he's been there, and he hasn't been able to get any traction for it. Well, so I mean, how- well, so last I saw, something like seventy percent of the country wanted single payer health care. So yeah. he's gotten some traction, just not in Congress. Well, I think he's gotten traction. I think a lot of other people have too. I mean, Obama tried his best with Obamacare. But he was only doing what he could do, given the prevailing politics in the country. Uh, and, and, and there's no such thing as going halfway with health care. You either have it or you don't. But if you go like, well, we'll do this, but we'll let you keep your, uh, your, your, your private plan. And so, to begin with, who the hell wants to keep their private plan? Yeah, why would you want to keep paying? If is there anybody? Free? Is there anybody here in this in this group who is happy with their private plan, or would no, be I happier be if it was single payer? I mean, single payer is going to cost you. Okay, it's going to cost you in taxes, but at least you get something for your money instead of a, yeah. a you know a military with gas masks. Uh, sure. y- yes, Ray. Bernie's point was is though even though it's going to cost you in taxes, you're going to save money because you're not going to have the deductibles and, exactly. and co-pays and everything. Right. So you come out ahead. And it's well, right. Y- yes. Yeah, straight yeah. up front, you know what you're paying for. And the other and the and the other amount is going to be made up for by raising the taxes on the one percent. I mean, he was really clear about it. Yeah. You keep trying to shoot him down. You can't because he's so clear on it. And uh, I'm voting for him. Uh, from, uh, there we go. Well, from, Me too. We already have early voting. That's three. Okay. Uh, <laughs> would you vote for him, uh, Kevin? I don't know. I'm getting close. Really? I'm starting to lean a little bit. Yeah. I can't believe Americans are so stupid. They'd rather play Blue Cross Blue Shield ten thousand dollars than pay the government yeah. five. And no, no, I wouldn't. Five. Todd. Yeah, fellow truck driver, my man. Come on, man. Vote for Bernie. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm independent. I sit on the fence for a long fucking time. Get off the but, he's look, but he's looking better, though, right? A little bit. 
look, the ideas aren't bad. I'm the only the only thing that I'm worried about with Bernie is the winnability factor. Well, I it's, it's the winnability, but how long can he last, and who would he have run with him? Well, um, who would you have run with him? Oprah. Yeah. Oh, Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about uh, put Buttigieg? Well, I don't want to say behind him, but that's probably a bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I think I I think whoever he would do very well with Buttigieg, and the reason is oh, yeah. he is so old. <laughs> and plus, yeah, he and he's so young. With eight years experience as vice president, he'd be a shoe in as president. But he's a, he's a, he's a very good candidate. Yes, uh, Ray. He said tonight that he's been he's looked up to Bernie as a mentor for many years. He said that tonight. Yeah. yeah. On the air. Yeah. He, he did. Could, he could learn, yeah. He has. Yeah. He said. Well, same. That's a, and maybe that's him uh get you know locking in uh vice VP in case he doesn't get the nomination. Yeah. Uh, no, he actually, when he was in college, he actually wrote a thesis based on Bernie Sanders and his policies. Now that we've had a day to mull it over and let it seep in, how do you all feel about these pardons that were issued yesterday? Oh, disgusting. The Banana Republic. <laughs> yeah. I just kind of ignored them, even though even one of them was a 49ers. Yeah, yeah. Well, who was it that was... That was no. I was trying to remember the name earlier. DeBartolo. 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 Eddie DeBartolo. Now, did he go to jail or did he get fined? No. He got fined. Oh, he okay. tried to bribe a company that had a, a gambling riverboat, uh, $500,000 to let him open his own riverboat. Yeah, he tried to bribe a governor or you snitched yeah. on a governor. Yeah, and the, right. And the governor was in on it. The governor, I think, might have gone to jail. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah. Why would he? Why would he pardon De Bartolo? I mean, yeah, once again, you know, I mean, yeah. somebody said, you know, there are a lot of people in prison right now who don't deserve to be there. What about them? Yeah, what about the poor? Yeah, what about somebody who just got busted selling pot? Let him get yeah, out for president. Yeah, Eddie De Bartolo, multi-billionaire. What about all the murderers who have been proven not to be the murderers through DNA? Yeah. Still sitting in their cells. What about people who of uh, sometimes of color? Uh, who don't have the wherewithal financially to withstand a a charge against them, and so they go out and they get a you know a state's a, what do you call it a, a, a who do you, who who are the guys that huh a state you know, appointed attorney uh, yeah yeah appointed attorney who then you know falls asleep while they're uh, they're uh, having oh, the trial public defenders, yeah. yeah public defenders. And and can't af so they have to almost plead guilty in order to get a lesser charge. You know, Alex, you know what you know about those people? Don't they deserve a, maybe a pardon from the president? You know yeah. what I could see Trump They're doing? They're waiting for Kardashian to come. Why doesn't the president say, "I pardon everyone who's in prison right now for selling pot"? Well, you know what yep. he would do, Trump. He would get. He would tell his people. Then make it like a reality TV show. All right, give me 100 people, like you said, who got busted for pod, right? Mm -hmm. Put them in a room, 100, each give them a lotto ticket, and then I pull out a ticket out of the bag, and whoever gets that ticket wins. He just, this is either great. That, either that, or you can just tell them, you, <laughs> can, do, like you, can, you can do an Oprah. You get a pardon, and you get, you a, get pardon, a pardon, and you get a pardon. Why yeah. do you got me You out go there? back to jail. <laughs> yeah, Ray. The other, the other thing that Trump did that no other president has ever done is whenever they do this pardons, the other presidents, they have like a vetting process in the executive branch where it gets run through through the Department of yeah. Justice and they check. Yeah. He just like woke up one morning and said he's going to yeah, do something. It's like, <laughs> yeah, Blagojevich, let's okay. get him out of jail. This, 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 Bl Blagojevich, <laughs> maybe he got too rough a sentence. I mean, it could have been. Really? You, you know, yeah, I mean, eight years for that, you know, I mean... Really, he probably should have gotten fined for it and, you know, had an ankle bracelet put on for a year or something like that, you know. But, uh, and I only say that because I've interviewed Blagojevich and I kind of liked him. He was kind of cool. He was fun. Alex, if he stays in his second term, he can always get Harvey Weinstein. 
a party. Yeah, yeah. You're really upset. Uh, but, but 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 you know, all of these people had some kind of relationship to Trump. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and you say, well, how about Blagojevich? How did he? Well, he was on The Apprentice. He was, yeah. He was on, he the, was apprentice. on the Apprentice. Yeah. Says I don't really, I don't really know him. I don't know him. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, he doesn't I don't know, know anybody, him. and there's always pictures with him. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, um, but but this, uh, so, and of course, uh, Bernard Carrick was Rudy Giuliani's business partner I in Giuliani Partners. Oh, disgusting. Uh, okay, <laughs> come on. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Who else got pardoned yesterday? Um, um, uh, uh, Milken, the junk bond, Mil Mil Milken. Yeah, but who? I'm yeah. sure Trump. Saving I'm sure Trump them. knew Milken. Scumbag. You know, yeah. I'm sure he knew Milken. Um, who else? Who else got pardoned yesterday? Did get pardoned? Well, there was some reality show person yeah. uh, oh. who got oh. yeah, Sorry. who got pardoned. There were there were a handful of them. Some of them you you don't know who they are, and the others you do. You know, uh, but uh, um, I bet he makes up a list the next. For the next, uh, you know, until the election, he'll do, he'll do it every few well, months. Well, it's amazing that he did this now because most presidents don't do it till the end of their last term. Yeah. Okay. He thinks he's going to lose. Uh, oh, he's uh, going to do it a couple more times. So if, you know, if let's say he lost, the proper time would have been January. You know, that's when they usually do it. That's when yeah. Patty Hearst got... Uh, got uh, Pardoned by, uh, I'm sure I remember who pardoned her. I think it was uh, Clinton. Uh, and, you know, they always wait till the end. And a lot of times people are very pissed off about, you know, who got the pardon and so on. Nobody's happy about it. But for the most part, uh, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a pretty good deal all the way around. But, you know, in this case, oh, hey, I'm doing this uh, uh, three quarters of the way through my term. Uh, I think he also wanted to take a little of heat off Bill Barr or something like that. I don't know. What do you think about this whole Barr thing? You think it's a phony that his whole protestation of I, I, I can't yeah, do my job because of the so. tweets and I'm going to quit and is he quitting or is he That's not quitting? Do you think, grandstanding. You think that was all grandstanding? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. I yeah. do too. Yeah. Uh, it's just trying to make himself look legitimate. Trump knows it too. That's why Trump's not really even saying anything. Yeah, well, Trump said, "Yeah, I I realize that my tweets don't help him," and then he went on and continued to do tweets like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just because it's, it's like all part. Yeah. His bar's whole department is going against him, so he has to give some, make it look like he's doing something. Oh, listen, the uh, I think some organization like uh, the uh, the Association of Trial Lawyers or somebody like that, or judges maybe in the country or whatever, came out against Barr for yeah, the way he's been handling yeah. the Justice Department. Yeah. So, uh, so he's been treating the Justice Department like they're Trump's own, own prime. Lawyers, a, a law firm, their own and private that's not law firm. What the yeah. Justice yeah. Department is for. Matt Crash wrote and said, "Where's Kathleen? Uh, I've been in contact with Kathleen, and Kathleen has been uh, uh, working very heavily, uh, like ten hours a day, uh, making as much money as she can off Costco. So that's why she hasn't <laughs> called. But she said she will call when she gets a chance. So we do miss her." Very good for the yeah. show. Yes. The guys who were uh, against Barr, there was 2,000 of them. Yep. Wow. Were these like judges or lawyers or yeah. somebody? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's just when you can't trust the government any longer, you know, on any level, it gets, that's getting pretty terrible. You know, yeah, because there really wasn't much substance in the debate tonight. They were just angry people. It was entertaining. It was. Well, yeah, but, but that isn't what our elective system is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be an entertainment. I mean, today when I was watching MSNBC, the thing that was driving me crazy about them was their whole playing of this thing like it was a, 
Oh, I don't know, WWE a wrestling match. You know? wrestling. Who do you think's going to win tonight? <laughs> Who? Oh boy, uh, 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 they're all going to go after so and so, uh, and how so and so going to defend it? And you know, this is the last chance for Some Biden, gr- and they're all just <laughs> yeah. ginning this thing up like it's a, like it's a, 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 a sporting event, and that upset me because this isn't a sporting event. America's soul is at risk here. You know, and it isn't a game, and it isn't a way for you to make more money selling commercials and ad time. You know, uh, when are we going to go back to debates being run by the, uh, 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 the the League of Women Voters and not by the networks, the individual networks? Why do we break in the middle of them for a commercial break? <laughs> Why do we do that? I have no idea. Oh, we got to pay for it somehow. No, you don't. No, this should be what you do for free it's because it's... The, huh? And, and by the way, how many here are sick of all these debates? I mean, how many more of these things do we have to have? Well, I enjoyed that one, though. I did enjoy it a little bit. Wait, because, but, 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 but only because it had all the, all the, all the trappings of wrestling, Okay. Well, the only yeah. missing was Mean yeah. Gene Oakland. Uh, and Piper mean Gene Oakland wasn't there, <laughs> was right? I <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, Todd, you had your now. hand up, Todd. I was laughing at my man with the Piper's pit. I remember that back uh, in the uh, day. The best. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, it, it's disgraceful. The whole thing is disgraceful. This is our America. You know, let's face it. America has always lied to you about the fact that you have the right to vote and so you can change your your government. Well, you can't change your government as long as there are only two parties. Yeah. What kind of a choice are you getting? You don't go down to the car dealership and they say, well, there are only two cars in the whole world you can buy. Right. You know? I'm sorry, you want a choice. And we need more party, parties. And, you know, and- what? In in France, they 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 set it up so that more parties have uh, can be a part of it. They have runoffs. So if if one person doesn't get like fifty uh, percent or seventy five percent of the vote, they have to have another vote with like more people from different parties in the election. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fantastic. So you get like three, four, five parties running for the. For the uh, presidency. Well, I would like to know when on yeah. our ballots, for crying out loud, we're going to have, you know, you have this person and this person, and maybe they have a space that says no vote at all. You know, I don't, none of these people are acceptable to me, basically, is what you're saying. And then if that wins, they got, you know, if nobody gets more than 50%, you got to hold another election. You know, I mean, it's just, it's insane the way we do it here. And if, if you, I often, I used the term once years ago, and I think I'll still use it, and that was we live with the illusion of a democracy. Yep. And what is that? Are you studying for your PSA test, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Show, show them what you got in your hand. It says PSA test. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <It's not laughs> and this is a penis. How am I gonna sleep? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had to go get my uh, mine checked today. You have to go get your. But that's oh, another story. Uh, that's another story. Was Play you, the music, damn it! Was yours up last time? Yeah, it was up, and I had to go get my uh, my plumbing checked today. Oh, okay. Well, the rotor reamer today. Well, ne- next Tuesday I've got my. See you tomorrow. I've got my big deal. <laughs> I got my big deal on Tuesday. They put me out, and they stick needles in my perineum and put radioactive pellets in my prostate and expect me to go home and play play golf anyway hey that's that's it uh for tonight i got the fire hose job Pretty Boy, you know, we ended up with a lot of people listening to us tonight wow wow See what happens when certain people aren't yeah. here? Anyway, uh, uh, I want to thank Charlie for being here, and I want to thank Todd for being here. One-third of our citizen panel tonight was of the black persuasion. So, you know, that's that's good. Now, if we only had a couple of women in there, it would help. Uh, uh, Tony, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Ray. If you will all give a big wave goodbye... I'll give you a big wave goodbye back, and we'll say goodnight. 
There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, let me tell you that Jack Bishop is next over most of the same gabnet. He will be here with the intersection. Give him a call too, okay? And uh, then he can discuss all this nonsense that's going on. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett, and I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Of course. Tell her I love her, okay? All right. Bye-bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>